It's a love-hate thing when an MMA fighter goes out on top. Some fans are happy, their fighter secured the bag, beat the big names and walked away with both his record and health intact. But on the other hand, some fans are sad. They won't get to see their dream matchups and their guy go on a longer run and cement his legacy. Then, on the other other hand, some fans are salty. These are those no good, evil, stinky keyboard warriors that provide nothing to society and humanity as a whole. Their only purpose in life is to spread disease in the form of negativity and trolling. They wish nothing but the worst. They want to see these fighters lose and have their records broken. Like, calm down. Like. Yeah. Khabib Nurmagomedov, lightweight, the only man to stay undefeated while holding that UFC title. A record of 29 wins and zero losses. That's right, zero losses. Some even consider him the GOAT. Now that's a rabbit hole that can start a war within the MMA community, especially given that Khabib left the game premature. But for this video, I want to speculate how Khabib would have done had he stayed after beating Justin Gaethje back in 2020. Did I just read that right? 2020? God damn, that fight was four years ago. Four years. That's like 48 months, or 208 weeks, or 1,460 days, or 35,000 hours. Ah, you get the point. Now let's take a look at how the division was looking way back then. The division was looking terrible. I'm talking watching a Bilal or Leon interview type of terrible. Now when I say terrible, I mean terrible in the sense of good matchups for Khabib. Kinda like when Volko cleared out the featherweight division. Looking at the rankings, Gaethje who just lost to Khabib was the number one contender. Number two was the Diamond who was already beaten by Khabib at that point. Tony Ferg, my boy, was number three, but everybody in their pedo Pat Berry looking uncle knows Ferg versus Khabib was cursed. Certified pedophiles. Then McGregor was fourth, and he just had that ranking due to star power alone. Plus, Khabib already beat him too. Five and six were Hooker and Oliveira, respectively. Honestly, had Khabib stayed, his title run would have kept on running. I find it hard to believe any of the top five or ten for that matter would have beaten the guy. Michael Chandler was the hot new signing at the time who would have been the best bet to overthrow the champ. But seeing how Charles submitted Chandler and how Islam ran through Charles and the current guys, I doubt Khabib would have lost the belt. I know, I know, MMA math never checks out, but this is the one time where it truly makes sense. Islam is basically mini Khabib at the moment, so his run is pretty much how Khabib's would have went had he stayed. Most even say Khabib is a more polished Islam, although I think each guy has their own pros and cons. Khabib is better on the ground, while Islam is better on the feet. Not to say Islam isn't a monster grappler. If either of these guys get a hold of you, just bend over and let them do whatever the hell they want to do. I'm gonna smash! I'm gonna smash! Now all that being said, Khabib could have just as easily lost any one of his next fights and I'll tell you why. When a fighter goes out on top, it's usually a good thing. The MMA game is not kind to those that extend their stay, but it's a hard thing to time. A fighter seems to be at their peak until one day they just aren't. Their punches aren't as fast and accurate, their takedowns don't look as explosive, or their body just seems slower. Take Israel Adesanya for example. After his loss to Alex Pereira in the first UFC fight, which he showed no signs of decline, Alex was just a better fighter that night. Izzy came back and KO'd Alex in the rematch. Adesanya looked fast, accurate, crisp, and as good as he did while he was working his way up in the rankings when he first came to the UFC. Then came the Sean Strickland title defense. Going into that fight, everyone thought Izzy would run through Sean just as Alex Pereira did. I mean, if we run that good old MMA math, Alex beat Sean, Izzy beat Alex, therefore Izzy should beat Sean. Even the betting odds were like minus 650 out of Sanya. Putting the Drake curse aside, Izzy was the favorite by a landslide. But lo and behold, the complete opposite happened. Izzy got smoked and Sean became champ, one of the biggest upsets in UFC history. Now, I don't want to discredit Strickland too much, his Philly shell was awesome and he earned the belt fair and square. Winning is winning. Winning's winning. But we can't just ignore that Izzy didn't look his normal self. His counters were non-existent, his timing was off, he looked sluggish and had no sense of urgency throughout the fight. I mean he had 5 rounds to prove he was the better fighter that night, but the man looked old and it reminded me of Anderson Silva in the latter part of his career. Now when I checked Izzy's age, that's when everything clicked. 
It's that magical mid-30s age when most fighters lose that spark and they are no longer in their prime. Izzy would then go on to fight Drikus and the same thing happened there. But in this fight it was even more noticeable. Izzy is a counter striker and with a guy like Drikus he should have ate him up. DDP comes in heavy and well sloppy. Wide looping power punches that one would expect a sniper like Adesanya to capitalize on. But nope. Once again Adesanya looked painfully slow and tired. All the way up until he lost his first ever fight by submission. He went from knocking out Pereira, mind you, who is the current face of the UFC, to losing the title and a title shot back to back. And in both those fights, he looked terrible. An MMA fighter is good until they are not. Now would this have been the case for Khabib? It's a possibility. He's 36 now which would make him 32 at the time of retirement. He definitely had a solid year or two of prime fighting left though. Plus, Khabib was grappling heavy so maybe that skill set lasts longer as compared to something like striking. But what a lot of people tend to forget is how much weight Khabib would cut each and every title defense. I remember every UFC embedded vlog would show that guy borderline passing out. He was skeleton cheekbone trying to make weight in the sauna. Like damn DC, give a brother something to eat. Khabib fought in the lightweight division, 155 pounds. But his walk around weight was like 180. That's a 25 pound cut throughout the camp. In the week leading up to the fight itself, he'd cut 10 to 15 in just water weight alone. I don't care who you are, where you came from, or how mentally tough you are. Weight cuts like that take a toll. Had Khabib stayed, the toll of the constant weight cuts might have made him slip up and lose a fight. Which leads me to what if Khabib went up to welterweight. Now here is where things can get interesting. The welterweight champion at the time was the scariest man in the UFC. Running through his division and getting KO highlight after highlight. A relentless warrior who embodied intensity and raw power. His piercing gaze and unyielding determination instilled dread in the heart of his opponents. None other than the Nigerian nightmare, Kamaru Usman. Even at the time many were calling for Khabib to go up and face Kamaru. But the reason that fight never happened was that Khabib and Kamaru had the same manager, Ali Abdelaziz. Ali Abdelaziz, my terrorist, terrorist snitch. Ali. I know a lot about you as well, you mad rat. They also both respected each other and were friends. Even in interviews when asked the question, each guy didn't show much interest in the fight. Once Khabib's dad passed away from COVID, most thought he was going to relinquish the belt and retire then and there. He came back, did the Gaethje fight and retired that same night. When a fighter goes out in their prime and on top of the world, it leaves them with this kind of invincible type aura. Think about Bruce Lee and the lore behind him. Bruce was a pioneer of modern day martial arts, a student master of the game. Everyone has seen the clips of his one inch punch and badass movie scenes. People swear he'd be champion. People like to say he'd be undefeated and beat guys twice his size. The level that martial arts is today compared to 50 years ago is night and day. Now, of course Lee was ahead of his time but it's too big a gap. Bruce died young and was never seen in an MMA fight. When a fighter leaves while still at the top, it always leaves the what if he stayed. He was so good at the time and he never went up against the current wave so maybe he can beat so and so. What if McGregor retired before beating Eddie, DC retired before fighting Jones, or Usman <laughs> retired before beating Colby? Would they be the GOATs? I think if Khabib stayed he would have definitely put a couple more defenses under his belt. But the one thing I can guarantee, the longer he stayed the more likely he would have lost that O.